In this project, we'll be covering threading using JavaScript's dedicated workers. And this will really help with the hiccups and overall jankiness you might have seen in previous versions of the terrain generation code. So, just to recap, we've been building out a series on 3D world generation and procedural terrain in JavaScript and 3GS, starting with basic mesh generation and moving on to entire worlds and advanced texturing techniques. Let's take a step back now and work on making the entire thing a bit faster, because right now it's, it's pretty slow. And we'll be using web workers, which are JavaScript's way of running things in the background in another thread, off the main execution thread. What that means is we can run the game at full speed on the main thread and build the train in other threads in the background without interrupting or slowing things down. Before we begin, make sure you're subscribed to this channel and on Twitter so that you're notified when new videos are released and you can also get previews of what's coming up. So this was inspired by another user who saw my planet generation videos and built a really cool version using web workers. I've included the link to their video in the description. So let's go screw with the code and make it faster. Threading or pushing work into background tasks isn't intrinsically complicated to understand. We can look at a simple example of how to do it. Here's a little basic chunk of code. What you do is declare a worker like this, or const w equals new worker and worker.js. Then, to actually do some work, you need to pass data to the worker and supply a callback for when the worker responds. Something like w.postMessage, and you put some parameters in there, and then w.onMessage, and supply a callback. Now, in worker.js, we also need to declare an onMessage handler. And remember, this is the code that runs in the background. Here, we'll declare an onMessage handler, check the subject, push a few extra items into the list, and post it back to the main thread using post message. Now, let's run this, and what you'll see is the console output has the list of items 1 through 6. Not super exciting, but it should help you begin to understand the architectural requirements when you thread things. In general, what you need to understand is that you've got the main execution thread. Imagine it as a single line moving to the right as time advances. You've got these chunks of work that take some time. Let's represent those with boxes. And so they could be anything in a game. You've got update the AI, that's a box. You've got three chunks of terrain to build, those are three boxes. Then you've got to draw everything, and that's a box. In a single-threaded context, these boxes all have to be done in sequence. So you do various bits of work, you build those chunks of terrain, then you draw, and you repeat it next frame. Do some work, draw, do some work, draw, etc., etc. In a simplified multi-threaded context, things are a bit more complicated. You have multiple timelines, or threads, where work can be conceivably done in parallel. So imagine now I have this second line where work can be done, representing the worker. Now, your first instinct might be to do something like this, where you push the work of rebuilding these chunks to the worker, and then wait till it's done. Then draw, and that's fine. It, it kind of works, especially if you have lots of workers things will definitely go faster than in the single-threaded case. But if some chunk of work takes an especially long time, what ends up happening is that the main thread ends up waiting around pointlessly, and the game stalls and feels a little jerky as it freezes for a bit. A better way to do this is to push the work to the worker, but we don't wait for it to finish. What we do is we just move on with our lives at that point, and when the worker is done, it sends the work back. And whenever that happens to be is when we update the terrain. So let's code this up. Luckily, we didn't write a mess of spaghetti code last time. Responsibility was delegated reasonably well from the main terrain class to a builder class, and chunks were encapsulated with the terrain chunk class. To thread this, it'll require almost no changes to the original application. We just need to write a new terrain builder threaded class to replace the existing terrain builder, and we'll be on our way. As a side note, threading is a complicated subject, but taking a bit of time to use good software design practices made injecting it into our code really easy. Let's take a quick look at the original single-threaded terrain builder class. You can see here, the public API isn't that extensive. You have an allocate chunk function, which just creates a new chunk of terrain. You've got this busy property that signals the builder is busy at the moment and can't take new requests a rebuild function, which is a request to rebuild these particular chunks, and an update function, which is called once per frame to do whatever work and bookkeeping needs to be done. Let's go and thread this thing. 
the first thing we want to do is make the worker interface a bit friendlier. We'll start by making our own worker class that wraps the built-in worker. We'll extend it by adding an ID. And the reason we're doing this is because it'll make it really easy to make a worker pool that sends work back to the next free worker. There's also an on message, which just wraps the worker's on message and calls whatever callback was saved for this work item, and a post message, which saves a callback and then posts a message to the worker. They're mostly just wrapper code. So now we'll make this worker pool, and it has to instantiate an array of workers, which is what we do to begin. Now the whole point of the worker pool will be to make it easy to send some work to the pool, which will then delegate it to the first available worker. So we keep track of who's busy and who's free. When we start, of course, every worker is free. Now we have this in queue function, and this is only a couple lines. Its responsibility is to shove the work into a queue, and then it calls pump queue, which is the real workhorse of the class. So let's go look at what that does. Pump queue is a little complex, but at a high level, what it's doing is whenever there's work to be done, it takes the next free worker. See this line here where it pops it off the free list and then marks it as busy? Then we take the next work item and send it to the worker. The callback in here, since the work is now complete, it removes that work from the busy list and reinserts it into the free list. Then the callback associated with the work item is called, and we pump the queue again. Let's build out the threaded terrain generator now. We'll start by making a terrain chunk rebuilder threaded class to replace the existing one. In the constructor here, we'll allocate a worker pool where we'll be sending all the actual chunk building to get done. Now, we'll need to swap out the implementation, starting with allocate chunk. What we do here is we create a chunk and hide it immediately, like before. Then, what we're going to do is send a message to our pool of workers, saying we've got a new chunk, here are the parameters. We also supply a callback here, which is called when the worker successfully builds the chunk and sends it back. At this point, on result is called, and we pass the data to the chunk with this rebuild mesh from data function, which is mostly responsible for passing the data along to 3.js and WebGL. You can see here, all it's doing is passing the pointers directly to those set attribute calls. The busy function doesn't change much. Instead of checking locally if it's building something, the threaded version just checks if the worker pool is busy or idle. In the rebuild function, this is responsible for taking a list of chunks and queuing them up to be rebuilt. This is super easy here. All we need to do is pass these directly to the worker pool. Finally, in update, whenever the work is complete, we just hide the old chunks. That's it. It's not really much to do here. Let's take a look inside the actual worker code. So that's all in terrain builder threaded worker.js. Down here in the on message function, we just check the subject to make sure it's about rebuilding chunks. Now, since that's all we do in this app, it will always pass, but you could conceivably have different messages handled here. Kind of like this. We call chunk.init with the parameters from the message and call rebuild and post it back. Most of this code should look pretty familiar since it's basically just a copy paste of the old terrain chunk class. But there's a few small changes that need to be made to support the workers. Notice the chunk.init call. You can't pass actual instances of classes through to the worker. So what we do here is in the init call, you can see we pass the parameters that were used to instantiate the noise and other helper functions. And now we instantiate them here instead. Looking back at the terrain class, you can see that I've left the old lines of code here. It used to instantiate the noise and everything, and then pass those instances as parameters to create chunks. But with a worker, you can't pass an instance of a class I mean, you, you could probably do something smart here, but that just seems like wasted effort. We'll pass the original parameters instead, like we do here. Anyway, the rebuild function is a near exact copy paste of the original terrain chunk build function, but instead of being a generator, we remove all the yields that were sprinkled throughout and just straight up do all the calculations. At the end, we use another trick to speed things up. We could just straight up send the data across and then upload it. We've still saved all that time computing, but we're going to be using shared array buffer instead. Now, a quick aside, shared array buffer is pretty sweet. What it allows you to do is create a memory buffer that's shared between both threads, meaning you don't need to copy the data between the worker thread and the main thread. Instead, if you instantiate these shared array buffer instances, which is what these new shared array buffer calls do, and you pass the length of the buffer you need, and remember these are byte arrays, so you need to multiply by the size of a float, which is four bytes. 
what happens is that you write into them, which is what we're doing with these lines of code here. We're copying all of the generated mesh data into these shared array buffer instances. And then you pass these back to the main thread by a post message. When you do that, you avoid a whole bunch of extraneous copies. And that's it. Once you've done all that, you can load up the planet and see the smoothness that you've created. As I move around, you don't see that kind of janky, smooth and freeze crap that you saw with the old one. Even with all the effort to use generators, it wasn't smooth. But as I zoom in and out, move around, everything is totally seamless. Let's put them side by side, and you can see that the old one is pretty bad. First of all, it takes forever to load. Let's just sit here and wait for it. There we go. That took a little while, and now let's try moving around. You can see it hanging up all the time. Compare that with the left side of the screen. If we restart, you can see it loads up super fast. All the chunks coming in quickly, while the right side seems to be sitting on its ass doing nothing. When you move around, it's all smooth. Nothing freezes, there's no sort of jerkiness to it. It's all good. And that's because we're using the full power of my computer at this point. I have eight cores in this desktop, so I'm able to build the terrain significantly faster than in the single-threaded version. I hope you enjoyed this. If you haven't already, subscribe both here and on Twitter. You'll get notifications for when new videos drop and previews on what's coming up next. I also chat with people and try to get a sense of what you all want to see next. Make sure to like the video and leave a comment on what you want to see covered in a future tutorial. The code is all up on GitHub, so knock yourself out. Like always, do whatever you want with it. Doesn't matter. Free to use. And if you don't understand anything, just ask me. Cheers, everyone.